In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to use animated video masks to create unique and interesting looks for your visuals. A video mask acts like a window through which visuals beneath it are displayed. Visuals take the shape of the transparent parts of the mask. I'll be using the blending modes 50 mask and multiply to create the mask. Using black and white or high contrast visuals produce the best results. I've got a three layer setup and I've labeled my layers as the following top mask and background. You'll want to make sure that your mask layer is above the layers you'd like to mask. I've also changed my composition options to clip target and active layer. This gives you more control over what layers clips are triggered onto. So the first method I'll show you to create a video mask is using the 50 mask blend mode. What this blend mode does is take the brightest values of your clip and make them transparent while keeping the darker values more opaque. In order for 50 masks to work properly, make sure that your A and B buses are inactive. You'll lose crossfader functionality, but you still have individual control over video opacity of each layer using their sliders. So I'm going to deactivate these clips here. Now we're going to trigger the visual we'd like to use as a mask and switch the blending mode of the mask layer to 50 mask. It appears as if nothing's happening, but when we trigger a visual in the background layer below it, we can see that it takes the shape of the mask layer. This is because the white areas of the mask are now transparent. So if I flip to another blending mode, you can see where the white areas are. So the 50 mask blend mode is actually working properly. So now you can trigger any of these black and white visuals onto the mask layer and the background layer will take its shape. Since I have a top layer above the mask layers, I can trigger a visual on this layer and blend them on top of the mask layers. At least this way you have one layer that's open and not being affected by the mask. So you can create even more interesting compositions. If you have a still image or a logo that's black and white, you can also use that as a mask layer. So here's the Doc Optic logo. I animated the scale value by using the timeline parameter so that it oscillates back and forth. What I did was chose a range of values and just let it animate over the course of the timeline. This is just a simple way to keep it moving and interesting. So I'm going to close out these layers here. Now I'll show you how this works with the multiply blend mode. First, we're going to set the mask layer to the multiply blend mode. With this mode, you can actually use the A and B buses along with the crossfader. I'll put my top layer on bus B and my mask layer is on bus A. Now activate your mask layer and trigger a visual that you'd like to use as your mask. Also activate your background layer and choose the visual that you'd like to mask. I'll choose this one right here. With this three layer setup, I can also add a visual to the top layer to blend with the mask layers. And since my mask layers are on bus A and the top layer on bus B, I can use the crossfader to fade between the mask layer and the top layer, just like this. There is a drawback to using the crossfader when your mask is using the multiply blend mode. It's that if your mask layer is set to full opacity as it is here, and you do a full crossfade to its bus, the bottom layers don't show through. To get around this, you can reduce the mask layer's opacity to 50% if the crossfader is on the A bus. Or you can keep the crossfader at the halfway point and keep your mask at 100% opacity. So this method might not be ideal depending on your situation. I'm just going to clear the layers and set the mask layer's blending mode back to 50 mask. I don't find myself using the crossfader much, and I prefer working with each layer's opacity slider anyway. Alright, so don't forget to turn off the A and B buses when you're using the 50 mask blend mode. I'm going to load a new mask, and one of the cool things you can do to create even more variations with your masks is to use effects. I have some of my favorite effects preloaded on the mask layer itself so that whatever visual is loaded as my mask, I can apply these effects easily rather than having to set up effects for each clip. I'll briefly go over these effects and show you how they affect the mask layer. 
The first one we have here is invert RGB. And this swaps the white and black values. So the mask is reversed. The next one we have is mirror. You can't see this one very well, so I'll trigger a different mask visual. Let's go with this one. And you can see that it's mirroring this mask. Next, we have distortion to create a bit of glitchiness on the mask. Next, we have kaleidoscope, everyone's favorite. Mirror quad creates a nice tiled mirror effect. Video wall, which is really interesting. Triangulate, which is one of the newer effects. And what's cool about this is it changes shape when you change the mask. So you can create all kinds of different looks using this one. Next, we have point grid. And lastly, we have twisted, which creates somewhat of a whirlpool effect. These are just some of the effects that I use. Obviously, Resolume has a ton of effects you can play with. And the beauty of masks is that you can try all kinds of different effects and create all kinds of different styles and keep reusing them. Lastly, I'd like to show you a way to use colored visuals as masks. Since the 50 mask and multiply blend modes use the brighter color values as transparency, you can get some decent results with colored visuals. So I'll trigger this colored visual as my mask and load up another visual into the background layer. As you can see, the result is pretty decent, but we can actually make this better. And we'll do this by going into our mask layer and we'll add a new effect to this layer, which is brightness and contrast. Now you can tweak the brightness and contrast of your mask layer until it looks much cleaner. So that looks about right. Now if I turn this layer off and on, you can see that there's a difference. The mask shows through a lot better and is much brighter. Your results will vary depending on the visual that you use. So experiment and see if brightness and contrast helps any. I find that visuals that have a main object surrounded by black tend to work really well. But for the best results, you should definitely use black and white. I hope this tutorial was helpful in giving you a few ideas on how to add more versatility to your visual performances using masks. On our website, we have some free black and white loops that are ready to use in Resolume. So feel free to download those and test these techniques out yourself. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more tutorials in the near future.